Yo, what's going on and welcome back to another Genshin Impact video and today we are going to be talking about the Animo Hypostasis which you're going to need for all of your wind character ascensions. As you can see its drops are a lot of these ascension materials as well as the same artifacts that all of the Hypostasis are going to drop as well. Now if you want to go ahead and kill the Hypostasis it's going to be here north of Mondstadt and you're going to want to go into the Stormbearer Mountains. And once we get there, we'll go ahead and run over to the Hypostasis and then take it on to go ahead and show you how to deal with all of his moves. Now, all you got to do is pretty much just run past these two uh, hilly churls and you can already see the arena right there. A lot of the boss arenas are very close to a teleport point and don't really have any enemies that you have to fight to get to them, which is nice. Now, you can see that as with the last hypostasis we're using the exact same team there's very few bosses where we actually have to change up our team at all it's just uh, we'll use different characters uh, depending on what boss we're fighting to do our main damage in this case since it's a wind character or a wind boss we're probably not going to be using venti a whole lot and we'll be relying more on Zhang Ling and Fischl to deal our damage and Noel is always going to be our healer now when we go ahead and start the fight a lot of the hypostasis is we like to just run around them to see what they're actually going to do with their first move he's got a clap very similar to the electro hypostasis and after that we can start dealing some damage to him now this move much like the other hypostasis uh, when he makes a circle around him you can go ahead and go in now he obviously does an explosion again and we didn't get out of it fast enough but you can either shield it up or you can get out of it to stop yourself from taking the damage now when he does this move you can see there's little like vortexes on the ground and those are going to drop updrafts you can use these updrafts at different phases of the fight but right now they're not actually relevant to us because we don't need to glide above him to accomplish any of the tasks in the fight. And as you can see, just like the other hypostasis, every time he uses a move, you have a little bit of window to deal damage. Some windows are bigger than others. Uh, this one, he's going to make a tornado. I like to just go to the outside of the arena. Uh, none of the tornadoes are going to leave the arena. And as you get about halfway through it, you could start to run back in because he's going to drop and give you a damage time. And you can see also when he did this, a whole bunch of uh, Animo sigils have spawned above him. Now he's going to use these sigils for one of his moves, and now is when the updrafts become relevant. If he activates more updrafts, which is what he's going to do right away, we can use the updrafts and we can collect his sigils. You want to kind of make sure you pay attention to him, because if he hits you like that, he's just going to knock you out of picking up the sigils. But if you pick up all the sigils, or at least as many as you can, you can see we don't really have any updrafts over here, so it's going to be hard to reach those. But the probably the next move that he uses, it is the next move that he uses, uh, he's going to suck up those sigils and do like an AoE around him. I just like to sit out of range of it. I believe he does it three times, and then you have time to go in to damage him. And there's still some sigils left that he can use for the move in the future. So just be aware of that. If you can manage to get rid of all the sigils, then he will not be able to deal any damage during that phase, and it'll just be a DPS phase the entire time for you. So you can see we have this phase again. So we're just going to go ahead and go for damage. He hits us, but as long as you have a healer, you're not that worried about taking a single hit. I mean, the hit was like... 25% of our HP, so we can take it. Now he's just gonna keep using this move. We could try and collect that last sigil, which we might try to do just so if he uses the move again, it won't hurt us. So now all of the sigils are gone. I believe he can respawn them if he does the tornado move again. But let's see what he does now. Oh, he's using this move again. So, now, since he has no sigils to suck up, he can't hit us with anything, so we can wait really close to him. When he has sigils, we have to sit really far away. Now, you can't enter this little circle, otherwise it'll knock you away, 
but since we're really close, we can immediately start dealing damage. And you can see we're getting him really low. I don't think we're quite at the end yet. He's going to do the same move again, but since we don't need to collect any sigils, we could just run straight to him and start dealing damage, but we don't have a whole lot of time. Butterfly move. We saw it once before, but we were in the air when he did it. So now we'll be able to get to the very last part of the fight, which is just going to be another updraft section, and all you have to do is collect all the sigils. There's going to be four of them. Now we're kind of messing it up here because I got turned around there. Ah! Oh, we didn't collect it. So he's going to spawn with a little bit more health, I think. Sometimes it can be difficult to actually get turned around while you're in the air. We take some damage there. Ah, oh, he's so close. So I guess we gotta do it one more time. This time there should only be one sigil. And even if you collect all the sigils, he is going to come back. And you have to just defeat him once more. It, obviously, since we didn't collect all the sigils the first time, he came back with more health, and then there's still one sigil left for us to actually pick up. He's being a real jerk about it, but we're going to be able to finish him off there. So all you got to do at the end is try and get all four sigils. Usually it's not that hard, but I kind of like took a bad path to actually get to them, so I ended up not being able to get them all. But... That's going to be the entire boss fight, all of his moves and how to deal with them. Um, really, if you have any sort of healer, you shouldn't be too worried about taking a single hit on your DPS or anything. You'll just be able to heal it up either during the fight or after the fight. It doesn't really matter. But that's going to be a, the, the fight for you. You can grab your rewards here. I don't actually need them. But that's it. Hopefully you found this useful, and I will see you next time.